you see everybody this morning. Surprise, you got me today. Uh, I'm going to get up here and try to do something now. Uh-oh. That's that rough crowd in the back back there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I'm going to try to get us through a few announcements here and some prayer requests. Daddy does this a lot better than I do. I'm, I just not, I'm not that good at this part of it. But I'm going to try anyway. We'd love to have y'all on Wednesday night. Uh, we had service out here. Uh, and during that time, uh, we got the young folks back here. They, they eat and they do a few things back in the back. And when they come up here, we have another service. So it's twice that y'all can come here to Word at, at, on here on Wednesday nights. And we'd love to have you if you're not, if you're not already coming. We start at 6 o'clock. Uh, obviously, here on Sunday mornings, we gather up. We have Sunday school at 10. And I promise you, if you're missing Sunday school, you're missing something. We've got some mighty good Sunday school teaching that goes on in here every Sunday morning. We'd love to have you at that. And then I want you to invite everybody you know to come join us at, you know, on Sunday. It's 10, 11 o'clock. Whichever time they come, we'd love to have you. We want you to come. There's almost always some literature in the back back here. Y'all are welcome to take it. Matter of fact, we want you to take it. That way we don't have to stick it in the trash and throw it out here and add to the poor old garbage man and have to work too much. So y'all please do uh, get it, read it, pass it out, do whatever you can with it. But it's, it's there to be used, so let's use it. Um, I'm told that next Sunday is Father's Day. Yeah. And that we will be recognizing all fathers around here. So we, us fathers, expect quite a bit next week. And I, I'll just go ahead and let y'all know that. So y'all be prepared for it. You've got a week of days. Notice there on you. The Lighthouse Slaves are going to be singing for us on uh, June 23rd. And we'll be enjoying lunch with them after the after the service is over. Y'all come on. I've never once listened to them girls <coughs> singing. It's different girls each time, but I've never once listened to them singing, not been with So y'all come on out and, and, and listen and enjoy it. It is uh, it's always a blessing. Uh, and especially to hear some of the testimonies of some of them young ladies, uh, where they've come from and where they're at. It makes you happy to know that, that, that this church supports that program. Hopefully we'll be able to continue to do that for years to come. If the Lord gives us that time. Pleasant Valley, and I'm assuming it's Pleasant Valley Baptist down there in, in the edge of the valley, as Walter Bowers lets me know, that's not the valley. You gotta go a little further on. But <laughs> Pleasant Valley Church will be holding or they'll be having a revival meeting. It's gonna be June twenty sixth to the thirtieth. Brother Damon Wilson, a former professional rodeo clown, or as I was once corrected by an old rodeo clown, uh, <coughs> bullfighter. <coughs> We'll be preaching every night, and they'll be starting at 6. I believe they'll have special singing each night and stuff like that. So do remember, if you call him a rodeo crowd, he may correct you. I don't know how he is, but I've met a couple of them. Maybe really you know that full fighter. They're not playing. So. Uh, but either way, whichever one he is, that's, you know, he's going to be preaching for us. That ought to be a pretty good perspective. <clears throat> Vacation Bible School will be July the 22nd to the 26th right here. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. every night. Please let everybody know that they're welcome to attend. And if you ordered a T-shirt, see Sister Ann out at the church today. I believe she'll either give you a T-shirt or give you the instructions on how to knit your own. I'm not sure which one she's going to do, so you can just come and see her afterwards. And I think that's all of our announcements up there. I did get handed some stuff. and Let me see if I can find all of it. much for the generous monetary gift during our recent hardship. The support, and especially the prayers, came right on time. Through this, we've been reminded that we may have to face trials in this life, but we will never have to face them alone. God's love, miracles, and provisions are all around us if we seek to receive them, even in the fire. We are so blessed to have Oak Grove in our lives. You all really are so much more than just a church you are our church family. We love and appreciate you all so much. Love Josh, Wendy, Carson, sign with That's from them. Good. Uh, so no, they still can use your prayers. They're still working on uh, getting things took care of and getting that back in their house and that kind of stuff. So uh, continue to pray for them. You know, if y'all would. All right. How's that part? Well, we're going to do some. Uh, Put some prayer requests. Thank you, Jonathan. I appreciate it. You got to keep me in line. They didn't give me an itinerary. I don't know just what to do. I appreciate that, Ben. 
All right, but we're going to take some prayer requests. I want to go ahead and, uh, and Daddy handed me a few. I want to go over these real quick before we get started tonight. But y'all do remember uh, uh, Sue and T.L. They are they're pretty sick. They need your prayers right now. Uh, so please do remember them. Y'all continue to remember the niece, please. She, uh, she's uh, getting better, slowly healing. She was able to make it to the ladies' meet this morning, but I had to go on back to the house. And the only good I can see in this so far is that she still can't walk me too bad yet. So, uh, uh, you know, she's healing slowly, but she's healing. So, y'all do please remember her. Uh, then he had written down here, uh, uh, Dr. Ethan Hayne, I believe is what he had here. It's, uh, and I didn't know much about it. He gave me a little information just to give you a little bit. He's a doctor that uh, out of Texas has been charged with some felonies uh, concerning the HIPAA laws and all because of the exposed fact that uh, there are places, I guess, there in Texas that are still performing uh, sex change operations on the miners. And uh, not supposed to be going on in Texas. And, now the FBI, I guess, is going to be in charge of So y'all do remember uh, Dr. Ethan Hayne on that. Uh, and uh, he also here, please do remember uh, Kenny P. Uh, the report they got this past, I guess it was this week, uh, is that uh, the catch was spread, I think, to his uh, uh, brain and his spine. I know mean, it's good what it is. So y'all please remember Kenny P. and his family. He certainly needs your prayers. Um, had here a note that says, uh, Miss Betty Hutchinson passed away last night. No? Yes? Yep, that's correct. Yep. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, all right. All right, and then uh, Brother Donnie Murphy from over at Calvary Baptist there in Bonifay, he had a heart attack on Tuesday, I guess it was, and uh, they placed him in the hospital. Okay, and they put a stint in. He's still in the hospital? Okay, still in the hospital. So y'all remember Brother Donnie? He can certainly use your prayers as well. So. Yeah, he's a pastor in Calvary now. Uh, I believe he filled in a little bit after uh, uh, Brother Wright passed away, and then they did uh, uh, hired him on as a pastor there. So y'all do remember Brother Don. So uh, I'm going to start over here, as as we normally do with these prayer requests. Oh yeah, yeah. They, uh, I guess there's three, uh, three females often because this week was attacked uh, by sharks here on our wonderful beaches. So mostly, I, I think it's about on the South Wall. Uh, well, I do know that one of the young ladies has lost an arm and a leg. Uh, so y'all do remember those. Uh, uh, Pray for their gift. So, so. Serve is, uh, you know, the last two years we've had it in our area. Uh, this year they're back where it originally started down in the Alpha area. So, y'all remember that? I think we've got a couple of attendees uh, this year. So, uh, we'll have some folks there as well. We get to go and uh, uh, hope to shed the light a little bit to those that's in need around the, around the Alpha area, the Calvin County area, and that way. So, Real good. I know uh, uh, the Anderson family. He had had a little scare there. They ended up doing some uh, tests and everything, and got good reports back. And, uh, and thank the Lord for that. You know, but, uh, his was a pretty bleak uh, outlook in the beginning, uh, and uh, uh, the Lord took care of that for him, and then he's continued to take care of him. So y'all remember the Anderson family still. John Butts, folks. John. Excellent. Yes, sir. Butts. Um, please remember me if you got all the job and you're after the good thing you got. Remember me, but. My name is Clay John Hardy. I'm going to go to the name. John Butts. Hardy. 
called the tax liability. I got to see Wilbur Wiggins, and he said, remind all of you that he still loves you. But he didn't see his office, he loved you, but he still loves everybody. Yeah, yeah, well, we missed something, Wilbur. I didn't go in his gut. know there's many on our list that he, that he has a, a list and then we have a list also with the, our youth group and all on Wednesday nights and they don't seem like there's ever any shortage of people that we can pray for. Amen. So uh, you know that's always that's always remember all of these, you know, take the time to, you know, go to the Lord in prayer daily. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, I know we can't always remember all of these, or if you can, you're pretty impressive. I've got a pretty good memory, but I can't remember names and stuff. But, you know, when we listen to them in here, when we make these requests and, and we put that in our hearts, when, when we go into prayer, God, don't have, we don't have to recite each and every night like that. You just got to put them on your heart and what he's saying. Lord knows who they are. And, and, and just take that time to, to send a little prayer up for those folks because that's what, that's what we're called to do is the church. We pray for each other. Any more questions?
three verses last we didn't even hear. <laughs> what you'll find is the programs that we got don't always match the book. So uh, <laughs> every, we usually catch it, but every now and then we, we don't quite do it. Although I will say, I believe you had a question mark put it on the paper back here this morning, and I didn't have to say anything about that. That's all right. Well, it is good to see y'all again on this Sunday morning. Glad to have y'all. How many of you is happy to be in the house of the Lord? There we go. I like that. See, that's good. I'm starting to, I'm starting to get a little bit more out of y'all. Of course, some of it's got to do with all these young ones in here poking the front now. But they do, and they, they really do get involved on Wednesday nights, and it's a blessing to me to, to have their involvement. The, the, you know, everybody's in, everybody's involved in it. And it, it makes for some pretty good, interesting topics and, and, and just uh, things that we all get to learn a little bit from God's Word that way. Yeah. And it is wonderful. But I, uh, this morning, it's something that we sang that song, How From the Foundation, because today I'm actually talking a little bit about foundations, which we'll, uh, we'll get into here in a minute. But I want to start off by some observations, which I, you know, I like to do a lot of. Uh, and then do a little educational stuff. And we're going to have a little bit of both in it today. So just said Jen's smiling. She's happy that we're going to do the whole class. But I want you to know that something that I've done this year, this spring, uh, is, is I've watched more professional basketball this spring than I have since Maggie Johnson and Larry Bird were battling it out way back in the late 80s and early 90s. Which back then, I didn't miss it. Uh, I went a long time there. Well, I didn't watch a lot of, of professional basketball, but I have been watching quite a bit this year. Just I'm not even sure why. Maybe it's because I'm getting older. I don't know. Because uh, it's certainly not the same as it was. And that's one of those things that, that's been a big obvious change to me. One of the big, most obvious differences is to me is, is and I'm not being ugly about this, but anyways, but, by, but poor calling by reference. And if, you, if you're you know, watch a lot of ball and you, you notice those things, you'll notice that, well, you know, you notice missed calls. But missed calls happen as part of the game. As a matter of fact, that's one of the best parts of the game is, is those calls that are missed, you know, that are, are not in, you know, it's just part of the game. They didn't intentionally do it. It just happens. But one thing that I, I, I'll have to admit is I'm, it seems to me that there are more purposefully wrong calls being made this year that I'm, that, as I've been watching. Uh, and, and I've even watched some WNBA games, which for me is something I've never watched the WNBA. I've watched, you know, and I'm not being ugly, but it's a little bit slower, and I like the faster pace a little bit of the, of the men's ball. But but I'll say there's some, there's some great talent out there without a doubt. And I mean, I, I think we all know who Caitlin Clark is now because she has really brought a lot of attention to women's basketball, and that's, that's a good thing. Cause She's actually a pretty good role model so far from what I've seen. So you young ladies that's watching her, uh, yeah, try to act a little bit like the way she acts. She, uh, she don't seem to, to act out too bad. But one thing that I've really noticed, and me and Denise watched the game yesterday, uh, and one thing I really noticed is that uh, some really, really bad calling in the sense of, of obviously bad calls. Um, and another thing that I've noticed with not just the referees, but with the announcers, it seems, like a lot of them are leaning towards the teams and the players most morally deep. Towards those that are, are the least respectful of others, the ones that are, uh, you know, just uh, not, well, that's the bottom line, not an image of Christ in any way. And I've, I've noticed a lot of that, it, it's, it, you know, involved. I don't know if it's just me, uh, but it's something that I've really noticed. And we continue on that, we see that, that kind of stuff going on in, in, in all walks of life here in the United States. It's, you know, it's not just in that at all. It's not at all. It's just some that was an observation I've made. But, but if you'll look at our justice system, we see rulings all the time now that, that, is, that are rulings from an evil heart rather than the moral guidelines of the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments, which is what our legal system is actually based on, yeah. believe it or not. And I know they won't admit that today in most places, but even the justice system of the United States of America is based on the Ten Commandments. 
Yet so often now we, we see rulings that are obviously not based anything on the Constitution or the Ten Commandments, but rather on the, the whims of, of man's evil heart. And we see that at, at all levels of, 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 of that as well. I, I see that so often now. Uh, you know, we just see constant, we're constantly hit with all of this. Uh, this, this just degradation of our moral baseline or our moral foundation as a, as a nation. And then just to give you an example, then that this is something that hit me again in the face yesterday, but I've been noticing this lately, so I'm going to watch a ball game or if I get to watch a, a fishing show or something like that. I, I, you, you know, you got commercials coming at you. They're trying to get you to pay attention to these things. And a lot of times, commercials, believe it or not, throughout the years, commercials a lot of times are used to program America's minds and ways of thinking about things. And that's, the way, that's just I guess, the way it's always been. And one of these commercials that I've been noticing a lot, it's not just a commercial, but rather a series of commercials, is, is uh, there's these commercials about uh, for medication for HIV patients. And it's, it, and it's very right there, out there. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that we can, we're smart enough to make medicines to help people not to suffer. And that's an awesome thing. It's a great thing. It's a gift from God. But in most cases, we, we tend to overdo things. But in these commercials, uh, uh, almost exclusively, the players or actors in these commercials are, are homosexual or somehow sexually deviant. Almost each and every one that's in the commercials. Almost every one. And the, the big deal about these, this drug is that they advertise that it makes them undetectable. It also means it also makes it uh, less likely that they may spread their disease. <coughs> and it allows them to be freer to continue their deviant lifestyle. Rather than, rather than try to teach them the error of their ways, well, we're giving them opportunity to be more free to continue in that lifestyle that is not in any way moral when we talk about the morality of this nation as it once was. Those issues right there in themselves were are listed right away, and I want to read this, and this is really not the sermon, but this is something to point towards this. Romans chapter 1, which is a chapter that you should study if you don't study it, because it is full of amazing stuff that teaches us how to deal with life. You know, what, the, what things are. But in verses 26 and 27, it says this. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves. And this is what I want to focus on. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Now, I'm going to tell you real quickly, and we're going to move along. This is one of my tangents. But I'm going to tell you real quickly that sexually transmitted diseases is what that's talking about. Just so you know, we are, there, is a, there are penalties to the sins that we, we, we commit. And as a nation moves away from that moral baseline and we continue down that slippery slope and we degrade into not just this homosexuality but sexual deviance, then, then this is the things we have to deal with. We're going to deal with these, these diseases and things like that that's going to come against us. But then evil men, instead of trying to promote morality, they will find ways to treat and allow this morality to continue to sink lower and lower. And that's where we're at today. These are things that I've just observed just less recently and seen looking at this moral degradation of our nation. Now, I want to tell you something right here. I want to go to go over here to the chat. Uh, the book of Job, real quick. And in Job chapter 17, I want to read to you verse 12. And in Job 17, 12, it says this. They changed the night into day. The light is short because of darkness. In other words, the ever-increasing majority, and I have to say that now, of evil people. I hate to sound like that because I remember when I used to say, no, the evil folks are a vast minority, but I'm afraid that's not true. Every increasing majority of these people do everything in their power to change the light of the darkness. They, it's like Job says, they, they want to shorten the day. Or in other words, they want darkness to prevail. They want it to grow. They want the evil to spread. And that's what we see. And we see this constantly all the time. When I was a kid, these kind of things that I've just been talking about, they existed. 
So I'm not going to act like well, they hadn't ever existed, Lord. It's existed all throughout history. From the beginning of this Bible to the end, you can find the darkness. I mean, you can find what Gerald was talking about way back in, in the Exodus there. When the children wandering around, there was a lot of darkness right there. A lot of evil. I mean, those guys were getting to see things that would blow our minds, and yet they still didn't trust God. They didn't keep Him as their foundation. And it cost them. And it does cost us. When we remove ourselves from doing God's work and God's will, it's going to cost us. And it does cost us. But the problem, the difference between when I was a kid and now is that those things existed, but they always existed in dark places. Y'all know the term, most of us said, that's old enough, coming out of the closet. That was a term that it says basically you're coming out of the darkness with your darkness. Is that's what they was talking about. And that was a big deal. And that was not something you heard much uh, back when I was a kid. Now it's not in the dark. There's no closet. Darkness is everywhere we look. So the darkness exists, the evil exists. It's everywhere around us. As Job was talking about it, it just keeps growing. So see, I, what I got to looking at it, it's all started. I want to read this to you first. It's all started in, in my morning reading here uh, recently. And, I, and I, I was reading Philippians, and I'm, I'm going to read to us right now Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. And this is kind of where this all started at, this right here. It says in verse 14, it says, Do all things without murmurings and disputing. Boy, that's tough. It's tough, but let's keep going. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Now, this, this is what I wrote over here in my, in my margin after reading that. I said, there is no doubt that we find ourselves in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Evil is evident all around us. We have arrived at a time where evil and sin are not just tolerated, but they demand to be accepted as good, even in replacement of what is good and right. Even still, we, the church, Christians, must shine as lights in this ever-darkening world. That's what we have to do. We have to do that. Now, that's hard. It's hard to not murmur and not dispute. Or in other words, not to whine and moan and complain and gripe and argue. It's real hard for me not to argue. Just ask my wife. I like to argue. <laughs> I've, been, I've been told that I probably shouldn't have been called. I don't know about all that. I, I don't argue. It's just I'm trying to make you understand that I'm right. No, I don't, I don't know. But the truth is, is that is hard for us in this world to not, to, to not murmur and not dispute. Especially when we see the things that are going on in our own country all around us. And those of us that has had some years on this earth have seen this change. We have seen how far we've slipped down this slope. Brother Gerald again, I believe, said, mentioned the Bible Belt when I was a kid. Man, we were in the heart of it. And I'll be honest with you, if you travel very much, you'll find out we're still in the last parts of it. Praise God, this is still a godly place in that sense, but it is not what it once was. And let me tell you, it's fast escaping. And all of that is, is that we have to lay that on, on the doorstep of the church. It's our job yes. to be the light in this world. We can't slack on that. We can't back down. But, but it, it, when we see all of this going on, we do eventually get more than that. And naturally, we murmur and complain. We're human. But you're all in. What say? He said this this morning. That, that old man's still in here. Yes. You don't get. We don't get to absolutely get rid of him completely until we separate this from this body and we head on to heaven. He's still there, and when we get worn down, when we get tired, it's just like the the temper, your temper, or your anger, or something like that. When does it come out the most? It comes out when you're the tiredest. We get wore out sometimes, and when you get bombarded all by all these things that's going on. That nature of the old man comes out and we it, it, it shows it's so ugly to him. And so we murmur and we dispute. Yeah. And that's what we do. And I'm going to give you a little word of advice here. And this is for me as well. It's something I've been living by for a while now. But when when we find ourselves doing that murmur and dispute, it's time to turn the leaves <coughs> off and open the bottles up. Now let me go ahead and tell you. Stay at home. You need to. Yes. But when it overtakes you, when it causes you to get to murmuring and disputing, 
go here instead. We need that for a little while. Then. Prepare yourself, your heart, to, to be able to receive the end rather than to move another by this door. That's what you need to do. So just remember, what we are is the life. So we need to work to be that life. Now, I'm getting on the Lord's foundation, so y'all just bear with me. And as I like to do, I like I like to, 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 to do the studious kind of stuff. I like to study things, and I like to look in, and y'all think y'all know that. So I got to thinking about this. It's something I've looked at before, but I, I, I decided to revisit it. And I wanted to look, look in a little bit about morality or about morals and standards and stuff like that. So I got this researching and doing stuff, and I stumbled across and a study done by Oxford University University, in their anthropology department. You can go to it and find it if you'd like to read it. It's uh, quite extensive if you want to read the whole paper. But they did a study on, on morals in the world and what they were studying, and y'all try not to go to sleep on me on this, but what they were trying to study was our morals, our moral standards, the standards of morality, are they universal or are they relative? Now, I'll tell you what that means if, if you're looking, you know, not clear on that. Universal means that it's something that is done by all mankind. Period. It's an across-the-board kind of thing. Relative has to do with something uh, a little closer to home. It may be relative to an area. It may be relative to a, co a, a community, an ethnicity, a family, or a person. All right? So that is relative. So if you have relative moral standards, that means your moral standards are based on what you think is good or bad. It's based off of your own desires. That would be relative morality. And then standard or universal morality would be that I base my morals on something else. Not myself. Not my local little group, but something else. So they were a very expansive study. They, they studied 60 different societies all around the world. And I mean literally on every inhabited continent, they studied ethnic groups. And they went in and they met with them, they spoke with them, they talked with them. I believe the, the word exchange was something like 600,000, it said. There were, were all of these uh, interviews and, and things done, observations made. And because, you know what, Oxford actually wanted to prove that, uh, that the moral standard was relevant. That's what they were trying to do. They were trying to say there is no actual universal standard of morality. There's no, or in other words, let me make this a little easier. There is no foundation on which all morals rest. Yes. How firm a foundation. Well, yes. fit and solid. Amen. And that's what they were out to do. But you know what happened after this long study? After they did all of this work and they looked, they came to the realization that all 60 societies all around the world had seven basic universal moral standards. There's seven things that each and every one of these societies, when they tested or checked them out, seven things that they all shared. I want to read those seven, list of seven to you right here. Number one, family values. In every society, and let me tell you, they didn't go look at the big societies, the big groups. They were going to ethnic groups. And a lot of time, in a lot of cases, they were going to what would have been indigenous peoples. Or for those of us that's not, you know, quite that far along in our vocabulary, Indians in the United States and South America, uh, the Aborigine in Australia, they were going to some of these islands in Micronesia and Malaysia and places like that. They were going to places that would uh, not be as likely to have been persuaded by Western culture or anything like that. So they were going to these smaller groups that were more isolated. Family values. Group loyalty. Reciprocity. Or you do to me, I do to you kind of thing, you know. I scratch your back, you scratch mine, except for actually it's more like do unto others that you would have others do unto you. We know that's the golden rule comes from the Sermon of the Mount. Jesus said in himself, that was there. Bravery. Because no society can exist without brave men and women. It's not possible. Respect. Fairness. And property rights. These seven things 
are universal throughout the world among societies as moral standards, as foundations. Now let me ask you something. Well, let me, hold on, well, I'll hold that question. Now I will, I'll say this, and we, we'll get on through here, hold on. The Oxford anthropologists were a little bit confused. Now they accepted that these seven things were without a doubt universal moral standards. They accepted that, but they were confused on how is it possible for groups that have never encountered each other, for groups that's never been influenced by mass media and things like that, how is it possible that they can have the same moral principles? How is that possible? They, they wanted to know, and let me tell you what, they were basing their science on the science of evolution. That's where their science is. Their science depends on millions and millions and trillions of years. It depends on it even stated in there the fact that humanoids have been uh, around for some 500 million in some way, and they have been living pretty much uh, in human groups for like 2 million years. Now, if you know this Bible, you know that's nonsense, and that's not true. That's not the way it works. Genesis tells us all we need to know about that. But then, so they, they're basing it on all of these things that's outside of, of the Bible. And they have no idea. They cannot conclude in this vast study, they can't conclude how is it possible that everybody around the world has an actual universal foundation on which they set their moral standard. Well, there's a young man named Dewey Dover who wrote an article for the Covenant Baptist Theological Seminary and it was called Moral Absolutes, the Law of God and the Anago D, or the Image of God. That's the Greek book. And he concludes that these seven standards of morality actually come directly from something that I think every one of us should have recognized when we read through those seven things. How many of us know the Ten Commandments? Amen. The Ten Commandments. And if you break down the Ten Commandments, we all know that the first four has to do with God and our service to Him and our, our belonging only to Him. Period. That's all that's all that's what the first four about. It's about loving God. <coughs> the back six tells us how to live our lives. How to love our neighbor. Remember when Jesus said, What they asked us the greatest is to love the Lord thy God with all our heart. And then love thy neighbor as thyself. That's because the Ten Commandments, and I just jotted them down for us here. The Ten Commandments are really two commandments. Love God, love your neighbor. Yes. That's what that's what it all boils down to. And so the, the standard of family values, group loyalty, do unto others as you would have others do unto you, bravery, respect, fairness, and property rights can all be found within those second, the last six. Yes. Right there. That's 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 the Ten Commandments. You say, well, that's not, well, that's not my money. Yeah, all of them. Honor your father and your mother. Don't murder, don't commit adultery or fornication. Don't steal, don't lie, don't tell. Every bit of that's coming right there. So we as Christians should recognize right where this foundation is. What is the foundation of, of the seven moral principles on which all cultures of the world base their morals? It is the Ten Commandments. They don't know the Ten Commandments. Let me tell you, he went in, it's a wonderful article if you like reading high education type articles, big words and stuff. He breaks it down and makes it very clear. How were we all created? We were created in God's image. Each and every one of us. And before sin entered this world, our first mama and daddy were sinless and like God. And they, in their very beings, in their fiber that who, of who they were, these commandments were part of them. You say, no, we didn't have these commandments until way over there when Moses got them up the mountain. No, 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 no. They were kind of like Jesus. They was here in the beginning. It's just finally God said, my goodness, I'm going to write this stuff down for these bunch of hard kids. That's why we still need to have them. That's why we need to have them posted. Why well, I run them down every now and then, kind of carry them around and look at them. Because then sin entered the world, and what became natural was not that which was natural before. And that was, we were naturally good and righteous and, and all those things. Now we're naturally bad. And so with being naturally bad, we need them written down. But let me tell you what, within our very core, in our very middle, inside of us, that part of us that even before we ever read a Bible or before we ever heard a preacher preach, we know there's a God. Yes. 
That's part of that inner fiber of who we are, how we were created. And within that is these Ten Commandments. It's there. And that's why and over there in Psalms and over in Romans, it talks about that even without this Bible and even without a preacher and even without a witness, the very nature, the very created cosmos preaches and says yes. there is a Jesus and there is a, or there is a God and there is a Savior. And it does that for us. And because of that, somebody living on some island in the middle of nowhere that's never ever once opened up a Holy Bible knows about these ten commandments. He knows about that creator. And he knows that that creator loves him. So that's how. I can answer an Oxford's question. I'd be glad to speak to him. I bet they've never had somebody talk like me if they're talking to him. Later. But that's all they need to know. It's right here. We've already got it. So I, I say all of that to get to this. And we say how firm a foundation and how perfect that was. As long as your foundation is strong, things stand, correct? Yeah. Jesus talked about it. Right here in the book of Matthew, in, that, in, in Matthew chapter 7, as he was at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, I'm going to read to you verses 24 through 27. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, this is Jesus speaking, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell and great was the fall of us. Any of us that's ever built a fort when we were little kids understand that if we don't start building that little fort on something solid, that it's going to fall apart. How many of y'all remember this? I can remember doing this as a kid, and this image came to my mind immediately. But remember when you was young and you went to the beach down there on that Gulf of Mexico, and you'd stand in the edge of it, some of us still may do it, because I will if I actually get there with my shoes on, I'll stand in the edge of the water there, right, or right there at the edge where the waves are rolling up and they're seeding, and you stand there, and boy, as a kid, that's what I did. I stood right there, and I didn't move my feet. Not I didn't move them at all. That wave would come up, and that wave would go back, and I'd feel sand moving out from under my feet. And if you was patient enough, and in some things I actually had some patience, and you stood still, and you stayed there for 10 minutes or so, and it kept that ebb and flow, in just a minute, you find you'd sunk that far down in the sand. And you ain't moving. But that's a sand foundation. Right. It's not very, it's not solid. And it gives way and it moves and it changes and your foundation changes. Right. Jesus said, don't build on the sand. Build on the rock. Most of us live in houses that's got a concrete slab underneath them. That's because we don't want to fall down. Got a <coughs> very least we've got a, usually got some kind of rock foundation or something. We've got a solid foundation. Jesus said, stand on that foundation. That's the, that's, the, that's the foundation you need to be on. Our morals are no different. We must base our morals on a rock solid foundation. And let me tell you, in this nation, there was a time when our morals was based on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. God was the foundation of our nation. And anybody that wants to argue with you is just arguing, and you don't argue with it, but we know the truth. But the truth is, is this nation was built on the foundation of God, on the Word of God. Yeah. And that's why we were so prosperous. And I don't say that because I mean, God gives us money when we, we follow Him. No, I mean that's why we were able to go and defend this country. We've been able to defend others in this world, yeah. and we have, and this is the big one, have sent more missionaries and more light into the world than any nation before or probably ever again. Yeah. But you know what? We've allowed that foundation to erode. We do so by slowly, or have done so, by slowly removing God from the foundation of our moral and our legal standards. Yeah. Right. And now we find the result of not a universal 
foundational standards, but relative to the yes. foundational standards. In other words, now our moral, our moral standard in the United States is, well, what, is, what makes you feel good? Have y'all heard that? I mean, you watch commercials that, that will tell you, you know, whatever makes you feel good. As a matter of fact, every commercial you watch pretty much will be about you being happy. It won't be about anything else. It'll be about you being happy. Because why? Because it's now relative and it's not on the solid foundation of God. That's what's wrong with the thing. Now I want to read to you real quick. Chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5, I want to read verses 20 and 21. It says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. How familiar does this sound? I mean, if you are out here in our world at all, man, I mean, that's, we, we change good for evil and equal for good. It's constant. It is happening everywhere around us. And everything we do, I mean, it is unbelievable. You go, how can this happen? Oh, it's because God's not the foundation anymore. That's how it happens. But I still can't help but wonder, how can this happen? How can these things be? How did we get to this point? I mean, I could think, think, how can we change what's good and evil and interchange it? I don't understand. I don't know. It's crazy. Over in 2 Timothy, I want to read to you there from there. 2 Timothy, I want to read to you from chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, and then verse 13, and it says this. This know also that in the last days, and let me tell y'all, the last days started with the ascension of Jesus yes. and it ends when God comes back. Those are the last days. So when you hear last days, don't think, oh, that means that he, oh, we're, we're all of a sudden, Jesus is fixed to come. Jesus may not come back for many more years. Hallelujah, he'll come back when God sends him. Yes. But let me tell you, these are the last days. From that time that he ascended until whenever he comes back, the last days. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Me, me, me. Covetous. I want what you got. Boasters. I look what I can do. Proud. Look what I did. Blasphemers. They got no respect for God. You ever see that? Only every time you turn to them. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Without natural affection. Or in other words, they have love that's not so it's not real love and it's from the wrong places. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, unable to control their lusts. Fierce. You don't know people's fierce get out on the highways and don't turn at the red light or something like that. Yeah, you see some ferocity. Actually, sometimes it's me that's up there being the fierce one. That's when I have to turn it off and get back in my Bible. Despisers of those that are good. Amen. Let me tell, let me tell you, go in there and be the only Christian in a place sometimes and then actually do something or say something Christian. You're not going to be very popular. And, that's, and let me just let me tell you, there's more and more places that that's the, the prevalent thing. Bow your head in prayer before you eat your meal. Say it out loud. I like to. I want to make sure I cover all those that, ain't, that didn't say it. Be bold, but don't don't be surprised when they're bold back, because they despise those that are good. They're traitors. They're heady. They're high-minded. They're lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Oh, don't we see that? It's all about talking about what makes us feel good instead of what makes you feel good. Really. Having a form of godliness, and buddy, let me tell y'all what that's in. But deny the power thereof from such turn away. Verse 13 says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It's going to just keep getting worse. It's going to keep happening. They're out there. Let me tell you, I, I, I've got a guy that I follow on, on Facebook. I've shown maybe a little bit of him. He's called the Holy Note. He is something else. He's got a brash. He stands out in there. There are a few things I think he could probably use a little bit of humility on. But he's not afraid to call out those that are false teachers and things like that. And he is show, he shows us that form that, that people have the form of godliness. Notice that's a little G, but it's not the real thing. It's false and it's fake. It's for their own good and their own pleasure and things like that. And let me tell y'all, it is covering up our country. 
false teaching is as 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 far advanced as it has ever been in this country. And most people don't even know it's happening. They're being deceived. Why are we deceived? We don't have a rock solid foundation in our life. It's available, but we don't have it in our life. And that's where we're at. That's what we're seeing is this this deception and it's happening and it's working and it's and I mean you see it everywhere around us. Now I'll say this, I'll admit that this must seem like a pretty dreary sign. And it is dreary. To see the condition of, of, of my nation that I love, and I do, I still stand proudly for the pledge. Anytime I hear that national anthem, I cover my heart. I y'all, I love this nation. This nation's been wonderful. This nation even still lets me stand in the pulpit and preach. It lets me enjoy a meal somewhere in public and say a blessing. I can do that. Nobody can tell me I can't do that. Not yet. Not in, not, not in our area. We discussed some of this stuff last Wednesday night about the possibility of things happening. And that's something I may preach later. But that's dreary if I look at it in the physical world. I choose not to do that. And that's that part about that murmuring, murmuring and disputes. And I said that uh, sometimes we need to turn the news off and open our Bibles up. When we get to that point and it gets to looking too dreary to us, it means our worldview is more of a physical worldview than it is a spiritual or Christian worldview. And that's the only way to look at this world, folks. If you're not looking at this world through some Christian spiritual glasses, then you're seeing darkness and you're seeing evil and you're seeing bad and you're seeing dreary. But I've got you some good news. If you'll turn to one more place for me, I want you to go to the to the Gospel of John. And in John chapter 16, I'll read to you verse 33. It says this. These things Jesus said, I have spoken unto you. He's been talking for a while to the disciples. Yeah. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world, you shall have tribulation. See, as a Christian, we're guaranteed one thing. We are guaranteed tribulation. Now, some of us here in the United States don't really know what that means. Praise God. Some of our brothers and sisters around the world can tell you all about it. In the world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. No fear. We don't have to fear the, the, the evil that's all around us. We keep on fighting against it, but we fight. We, we need to fight it from a solid foundation. And we need to fight it in a, a spiritual warfare way, in prayer, and in this. Yes. See, this is the first foundation. For us. Yes. This is our solid rock. Amen. Stand on it in everything we do in this life. Look at everything you look at through these eyes. And although it is a dreary world that we live in, and a dark world that is, as Joe put it, even that, that darkness is closing in. And it is. But that darkness, as in John chapter 1 says, can't comprehend the light, or other people can't overtake the light. You keep on shining the light. You keep that moral baseline of God, of His Word, of Jesus. We'll be all right. Yes. We'll make it. We'll be. We'll be, be all right. But here, here's the thing. These days that we see in this nation is the result of removal of the universal foundation of God as our moral baseline. I encourage you to strengthen your moral baseline because when you do, you'll strengthen the moral baseline around you as well. Yes. And if we keep on strengthening the moral baseline around us, eventually it's going to spread like wildfire too. And hallelujah, we'll hear more stories about Auburn University or Georgia, where they're coming together, they're hearing the word of God and they're trusting in the yes. Lord and they want to be baptized and they want to tell all the world, hey, my moral baseline is a solid rock foundation. Yeah. It's not solid. Let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you've given us. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for living in, for live, letting us live in a country that lets us come in here. Yes. Lord God that lets us stand on a moral foundation that is a solid rock that does not change. God, I thank you for that. I ask you, Lord, to put it all each and every one of our hearts, though, to seek and to pray and to read and to study and to witness and, and to tell all the world about 
this solid rock so that it might spread throughout this nation once again and that this nation would not hey, not be relative in our foundational principles but Father that we would be on that rock that universal rock of God Father that we might be a light to the world again oh for Lord I pray that you would just place it on our hearts to seek that Lord I pray that you would be with each and every need that's been made mention up here today I pray that you'll be with each and every person that's here with us and those that can't be with us Lord put it in our hearts to spread the good news in each and every moment that we go forth let us shine our light and Lord if there's anybody in here that don't have that candle lit I pray today is the day that they come to know this I pray that today is the day that they become part of the light and not the darkness that they will walk out of that darkness, Lord God, and that they'll spread the light. Let today be the day that they call on you. Lord, lead us, guide us, direct us, bring us back at the next appointed hour. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Y'all have a good day.